Welcome to our virtual back to school night here at Clovis West High School. My name is Gabriel Calderon and I'll be talking to you about advanced placement macroeconomics. So I'm a social studies teacher here at Clovis West. I teach AP economics as well as college prep government. I also coach water polo here at Clovis West and swimming here at Clovis West. This is my 11th year teaching. The course for AP Macroeconomics is a two semester or full year course. It fulfills both the government and economics graduation requirement. Uh, the graduation requirement is that students receive a minimum of 60% of available points both semesters. Late work is valued at half credit or 50%. Homework and classwork account for 20% of the student's overall grade. Quizzes are 20% of the student's overall grade. And unit tests are 60%. So there is a heavy emphasis on the unit tests this year. The class grading scale um, uses A through F. We do not use pluses or minuses in this course. 88% um, and above is an A, 70% and above is a B, 67.9% and above is a C. Ds are 60% and above, and anything below a 60% is failing. Okay, the AP grading scale based on our course point available for the test, a five score is an 80% available points, a four score is 66% available points, a three, which is the minimum passing score, is 54% available points. Uh, the course focuses about 75% of our class on macroeconomics versus micro, um, and so we are able to kind of slow down the pace a little bit and just study the entire macroeconomics curriculum over the entire year versus some institutions that do it um, micro one semester and macro another semester, which effectively makes you need to go twice as fast. For most universities, unless you are within that finance or business or econ field, would require either macroeconomics or microeconomics to get the GE requirement. There is a quiz retake policy that is uh, different than a lot of other classes, so this is one that I definitely need to go over. Students are required to hit at least 70% 70% proficiency for all of our chapter or module quizzes. Any score that is below a 70% will not be entered into the gradebook. If it is not entered in the gradebook, the gradebook assumes that the student has either not taken it or it is not anything. It's a 0% is the way it affects the student. Uh, students can review and they can retake it as many times as they need to but it has to be outside of class hours. So you may hear your student saying they need to go in early or come by at lunch or stay after school to take an econ quiz if they did not receive a 70% or higher on that quiz the first time around. It's not a problem. As long as the students get it eventually, I'm happy with it. We do have a Google Classroom website, which all of the students are currently a part of. Um, on the Google Classroom would be all of our PowerPoints. So anytime we go over anything in lecture, there's always going to be an accompanying PowerPoint. Those are all available to the students. In addition, I have a lot of different videos linked of different tutorials. Um, the second point down here, ACDC Economics, not the band, um, but there is an economic YouTube channel and they go over nearly every single unit, every single topic that we do. It's by a AP Econ former teacher. Now he does this full time. So there's a very, very good video resource on YouTube that the students have been exposed to. And I link those videos on our Google Classroom website. So if they're ever struggling, um, you could maybe check with them and say, hey, have you watched the YouTube videos on your class website? Because they are excellent resources. Um, the unit breakdown, each semester we cover three units. Um, so right now in the fall semester, we're uh, nearly completed with unit one, which is the foundations of economics. Uh, unit two will be understanding what GDP is and unemployment, as well as um, getting a sense of what inflation is. And then the third unit, which is our final unit this semester, is on fiscal policy and its effects. Uh, second semester, grades refresh. Everything is a fresh start um, in the spring. 
Unit four, we come back with monetary policy. Unit five is on fiscal and monetary policy together. So it's kind of a combination of units three from the fall and units four from the spring. And then unit six is our final unit on international trade. And then we usually have about a month uh, to do review work for the entire year before going into the AP exam. Um, you may find your student with a increased interest in the stock market pretty soon. We're going to be starting up a stock market simulation. Uh, we do two each semester where the students will be given a hypothetical $10,000 and they have to choose how to invest it, why they're investing it. Um, these must be publicly traded companies. The winning teams, because they can operate as a team with two people, uh, will be receiving extra credit each semester. So you may hear of uh, some increased interest on what's going on in the stock market and, you know, they, uh, they'll probably be asking you some questions, looking for some tips. Um, please join our text remind alerts. I send out one or two a week, and these are there to help the students. Um, sometimes it's trivial things like, don't forget to bring your textbook. Um, other times it could be a little bit more important regarding um, something that could be covered on an upcoming quiz or a unit test. So definitely a good idea to join that remind code. You just send a message to the number 81010 and the message that you're sending is at CWAP macro. Um, your student should also have this information. So if uh, you don't get it right now, they should also have it as well. Um, please at any point, feel free to email me. My email's down below. It's Gabriel Calderon at CUSD.com. Um, if you ever forget this, your student should also have it in their syllabus as well as it being available on the school website. Thank you. I hope you have a great evening.